Good evening. Hello, everybody. My name is Xiomara Mayo Ingram. And just like every Thursday, here I am with our emotional cafe session. And tonight we have freedom from resentments, a great topic that is going to help us learn more about resentments and the kind of things that we can do and actions that we can take in order to cope and manage our resentments, not to let them affect um, our lives. As usual, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your lives. And thank you for supporting Emotional Cafe. Emotional Cafe, it's your virtual platform and I always, always encourage you to invite others to benefit from the amazing things that Emotional Cafe is offering. Right now we have great articles and we're having our newsletter that is coming this um, next weekend so if you haven't subscribed remember to go and do so and i want to remind you that if you have missed any of our presentations you can find them all on video all you need to do is visit visit our web page and simply go and choose the topic of your preference invite your friends invite your family members and finally i want to remind you that as a life coach part of what i do is assist individuals that contact me for individual sessions some of them um, want to work in a more intense, um, intense way, intensive way. So um, we now have our intensive program of sessions that is called boot camp. So feel free to contact me and I can answer your questions and tell you how it works. It's been a great experience for the people that have already signed up and have come and spend a couple of days here working with me intensively in those specific issues that you need help with, that you need a huge boost of your confidence and to push you forward. So that's what we are here for. But contact me, it doesn't matter in which part of the world you're at. I can also offer Skype sessions. So. If that might be something that is more convenient for you, um, just feel free to send me an email. Our email information and how to contact us is all on the web page. And you simply let me know how I can assist you and I will be contacting you personally to make sure that we can accommodate a schedule that works for you and me as well. So with that said, let's start with freedom from resentments. And let me tell you from my personal experience that um, the people that knows me nowadays, it's hard for them to imagine me as someone that used to be very resentful all the time. But I have to say that this is a topic that I can relate very much because for a long time as I was growing up, um, I used to be resentful about everything and everyone. There was always this bitterness inside of me and I was always blaming on things and people and situations. and. I always had that reason inside of me, that huge anger, um, there was always something to justify why I was feeling that way. And that's what resentment is about. I want to start kind of clarifying or giving you a clear definition of what resentment is. Resentment is that strong and painful bitterness that we feel inside when someone um, doesn't do what we expect them to do with we when it has do, done us wrong or when doesn't the things are not the way that we expect them to be that anger that bitterness that pain that we feel inside is what is called resentment and the way that i see it i kind of put it in simple words it's what we refill that whatever you we experience in the past that causes pain and causes to be angry we bring it back to the today to the now and we re-experience and relieve all the emotions all the sensations all the feelings that it made us feel and again all over again it doesn't matter how long ago it happened we again get to feel the same bitterness inside and that's what resentment is about and more than the feeling itself is that ability to bring back whatever happened that affected us and bring it to the present and reproduce it in a way that we get to feel exactly the same way we felt way back when it happened and that's how powerful resentment get to be to the point that it just block us disconnect us and affect us in such a negative way that it's hard for us to move from there 
and actually move forward. So um, one of the things that I was working, as, as I was working with this topic and with my support group, because um, as I always recommend that you have your support group, I also have my support system and I have a specific people that have been along my recovery process and my growth process. And these are key people that are important to me that I get to nurture myself and discuss some of the topics and ideas that I have. And sometimes part of what I do in the sessions is based on the feedback that we as a group get to um, share. And one of the things that one of these people mentioned that was so um, noticeable for me that I wanted to bring and share with you was the fact that resentment can show many different faces. And more than faces is that a specific reason or um, element to justify the way we feel and I'm gonna call it faces but you're gonna see how interested how interesting it gets to be because we have sometimes the justified resentments and I do like this you know quoting justified because we feel with those specific resentments sometimes something happens and we feel that we have all the right to be feeling the way we feel and that's what I call justified resentments, because those are the kind of resentments that are constantly getting that fuel, that energy from me, considering that I have the absolute right to be feeling the way I feel. Maybe it's that someone did me wrong, maybe things didn't turn out to be the way they were, but I get that big team mentality and I start justifying how I feel. So those are very dangerous resentments because being justified, or so we think, makes them so much harder for us to be able to let go and move on from them. So keep an eye on that phase of resentment, those justified resentments, when you think you have reasons to be feeling that way towards certain people or situations or things. Now, another phase, interesting phase, is those resentments produced by a wrong perception or a distortion. I remember when I used to work as a, as a counselor in a, in a inpatient treatment center, um, I used to work with family. I used to have family interventions and, and some family sessions and to kind of help them understand, you know, what's going on. And I remember always addressing something that was really important and some parents and some family members told me how great it did to them to understand that sometimes things happen that we perceive them in a certain way and it hurts us. It creates a wound, it creates that huge hurt, maybe we're angry, maybe we're in pain, but we perceived that event in a certain way that was very dramatic or traumatic for us. But then when we talk it out or when we get to sit down or when we get to actually clarify the whole situation, it turns out to be that it was a total different um, way to see it and the way I perceived it was part of my distortion or my wrong perception. Let me tell you this, even though it was wrong the way I perceive it, it still it hurts and it still affects us. And that's why I wanted to bring this phase of resentment so you can identify it clearly because maybe it's something that happened to you and you perceive it in a certain way and then you figure out that it was totally different, that the way you perceive it was wrong, that that's not what the people or the situation was meant to to make you feel. And it, it really doesn't make you feel any better though because for a long time, we kept thinking that was a justified resentment, although we're realizing that it's caused by our perception, but then there's a wound that we need to heal. So that's another important resentment to identify because sometimes it's hard after we felt the way we felt to be able to imagine it in any other way or connect in any other perspective of it. And it causes the, the harm, it causes the damage, it had a negative impact in our lives, and therefore it's gonna be hard for us to move from that resentment. But we need to be open to the fact that maybe that resentment was caused by, by our distortion or by our wrong perception of things or events. Another phase that we can find resentments in our life, another way that we can um, 
show it or identify it is that resentment produced by our unlimited expectations that are never satisfied. We sometimes get to have these huge expectations about people, about things, about a job, about um, a partner, about a friend, and then something happens and the whole thing crashes in front of our eyes. What we were expecting to happen or what we were expecting um, the way that we expected things to be, it's totally different from our expectations. And then we get all bitter up inside. We get mad, we get angry, we're in pain, and it's hard for us to move from that emotional stagnation caused by that um, resentment. We have, I, I once heard a phrase, and it's something that we have very common in the support system groups that says that resentments are nothing but um, this guy's expectations. That's what it says. Resentments are nothing but this guy's expectations. And what it really means is that by having all those expectations that you create in your mind about things and about people, things that actually you cannot even control, you are just setting yourself up for being, for ending up becoming resentful. So keep that in mind because sometimes, and I can totally relate to that and that's probably where I can actually fit myself in when I was telling you my, my um, teenage years, I kept having these expectations of life and people and things and situations and everything ended up being different than what I expected. And therefore, that was my reason to be angry, you know, because nothing turned out to be the way it was supposed to. So it'll be easy to identify if that is the, the, the cause, the origin of your resentment. So keep that in mind as well. And the final phase that I have of resentment is the resentment produced by our own unresolved issues. Let me tell you, sometimes nothing is happening outside. It's just our own conflict inside, our own unresolved issues that we have and that instead of dealing with those we just put the spotlight to the outside to the people and to our surroundings in order to blame in order on others and have a reason to continue being angry at life at the world at the way things are so if you have unresolved issues if you always think that the world is spinning around you if you always have think that everything that happens is happening to you because specifically it's you, you might have unresolved issues and I invite you to closely take a look at yourself and make yourself an inventory and why you feel that way because probably you are feeding these um, resentments and it's nothing but your unresolved internal issues, your own emotional conflict. So. Um, those are the, the, the kind of resentments that we could clearly identify that are the ones that we can kind of show in different faces, in different ways. So let's define what or who I become resentful um, with. Let's identify this because we have some common categories that I want to address with you tonight. For instance, one of the most common is becoming resentful with your family. And I'm going to use it, I'm going to do all this um, using me as an example. I'm going to be talking about myself. But what I want you is to relate to me. I don't want to do it saying you, 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 because I don't want you to feel that I am pointing the finger at you. But rather than that, that you can actually relate to what I'm saying. So one of the most common resentments that we get to have, particularly me, is with our family. Sometimes it can be with the whole family, with the family system, with the way the family um continues with the family legacy, or maybe it can be with a particular member of the family. It's very common to be to become resentful with your mother or with your father. Those main figures that we have, those are our main reference figures, and sometimes we simply get and become so resentful about them. It happens a lot. It's not um, something that I can say it's always like that, but it happens a lot with daughters being becoming resentful of their mothers and sons 
same thing with the fathers so that's very common sometimes we also have resentments that show between siblings maybe it's something with my brother or my sister particularly me i was always 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 resentful and and resentful with my sister had this huge resentment with her was always making comparisons with her and it's funny because eventually we grew up and with all the circumstances we went through we have become more than sisters we have become best friends but it was absurd and ridiculous the way that i kept comparing myself to her and always blaming it on her whatever bad luck i had in my life it was my sister's fault so sometimes that happens between siblings and that's very common as well sometimes as parents we become resentful with our kids the way they are turning um, out to be and part of the reason why i think we become so resentful has to be with the fact that we no longer has the power you know each person is born with their own personal traits and their own characteristics and the, their own character and as they grow older finding out that your kids take a different path than what you have um, consider for them what you have dreamed of or what you thought or expected them to take it can be a reason to become a uh, resentful and I totally relate to that and I have told you it's something that I have struggled the whole month of April how I have struggled and have been dealing with my my whole level levels of acceptance myself um, having an adult child that is actually moving on with his life and how sometimes it's hard for us as parents to accept and simply understand that it's their choices is their lives because we know better or so we think because of the age because of the experience we believe that we can be such a great source of wisdom but guess what sometimes they don't want our wisdom and sometimes they don't want our experience and instead of understanding that I as a mother or maybe as a father we get we get to become resentful with them and this is a total um, natural feeling if we deal with it and cope with it and manage it and control it but when it becomes a conflict when it becomes to a point that it damages that relationship we're losing perspective here we really are and we have to look at ourselves and see where we're failing because it shouldn't get in the way of our relationship we should be fully aware that everybody has the right to experience their life and make their mistakes and make their choices and deal with their results but again when it's when it's our turn as parents this is really hard to do so i totally relate to that and it can be that maybe a resentment is with um, any other member of the family that's something that also happens so the whole family um, any member of it can be exposed to us lashing out and simply um, getting hooked emotionally with a situation or an event or a behavior from one member one particular member of our family or as I said it can be with the whole family um, as a system or we also can become very resentful and this is something that is very common with our spouse our significant other we're in a relationship and then we want this other person that we love to act in a certain way or to do the things that we consider that they should do and we sometimes forget that we're a team and that the other person also is entitled to an opinion or to express how he or she thinks we should do the things but what's really the danger in a in a couple's relationship has to do with the fact that whenever this happens we sometimes don't have effective communication going on and instead of expressing how we feel or expressing that maybe the way that you acted in a certain situation made me feel upset we simply block our emotions and then we become resentful inside and we don't say it we just keep it in as if we have a boiling water pot and it continues boiling inside and the danger is that as you keep adding resentments guess what happens the whole relationship gets so damaged that sometimes it's hard to save so if you are suffering from lack of communication if you don't think that you have effective communication skills in your relationship be very careful because that might be an open door for resentments to come in and stay not only for a long time but to the point that can kill the relationship other resentments are with the ex 
with the ex um maybe a, a relationship that it's over and you're kind of resentful with your ex and those are very dangerous as well this happens a lot especially when you break up in a relationship but you wanted to continue in the relationship and maybe the other person didn't want to be with you anymore and then you become very resentful and it's hard for you to move on to a new relationship while you are embracing that resentment so keep that in mind and sometimes i know it's hard to deal with a person that you used to be in a relationship and no longer are with and especially when you have kids and especially when you see life uh, from different perspective which, which is usually the summary of why you're no longer together then you have to deal with this person that you're forever related to because of the children and it's really hard to deal with the way you feel about how they do things but be very careful because remember that your recent resentment is not only affecting you but it's also affecting your children as well and if you don't manage them appropriately it's going to be very hard for you to move on and have a healthy relationship later on so Again, um, when I go to my final wrap up and the recommendations, I'm going to be talking a little bit about forgiveness. I know it's hard. I've been there. But I tell you, you need to be able and willing to let go on the past so you can move forward with very little baggage towards your new relationship. So um, other situation that we might become resentful is in our professional working area, maybe with our boss or supervisor or maybe with some co-workers. And this happens a lot, especially when we are performing in a way that we are expected to accomplish certain things and we are expecting that validation and recognition for our supervisor or our co-workers and it doesn't happen. It kind of hurts inside, it really hurts our ego and we get to become resentful just like this. So keep that in mind because um, it's something that can cause conflict in your professional life and it might even affect the way that you perform your work or whatever profession you're um, working at, whatever field is it that you are working at, and it might even affect your relationship with your coworkers and even your image, your professional image for um, recommendations towards a, maybe an increase or a better position. So take that in mind because sometimes we don't realize how resentments are affecting us until it's too late. So finally, another important resentment is with friends. And again, this is something I can totally relate from the perspective of be, becoming resentful because um, certain friends didn't act or didn't behave or didn't do what I expect them to do but I have also suffered from having some friends becoming resentful with me because I didn't do what they wanted me to do or I didn't follow their advice or I didn't you know I didn't ask for their opinion on a certain um, thing that I was planning to do and this is the moment when we need to remember that we don't own anybody and that everybody has the right to make their own choices and i have to learn a um, long time ago i had to learn the hard way not to be giving my opinion unless i was asked for eventually i became a life coach which made it so much easier because then people get to work with me and get to ask for my advice my opinion my guidance but before that professional um, area in my life I had to learn the hard way to respect what others were doing with their lives whether I like it or not and just to remember that sometimes just the, the fact that you love someone and you want their best doesn't necessarily means that they want you to tell them what to do and if I would have known that when I was younger, I would have avoided many stressful and painful situations that I created with friends that I loved dearly and that affected our friendship for a little while. Um, luckily, I was very fortunate to realize that and kind of made amends. But at the same time, I've seen it on the other side of the street and I get really aggravated when friends are imposing their opinion or their advice on me expecting me to do what they tell me to do everybody needs to figure it out in a way that fits best to their needs and whatever gives them peace remember that 
whatever gives them peace so other general common resentments that i didn't want to um live without mentioning tonight is the fact that sometimes my resentment can be towards an organization maybe a cause or maybe life itself and i also relate to that because as i told you being very resentful all the time i used to become resentful of certain songs certain phrases certain um articles um certain um i remember reading a verse i i, I think it, it had to do with the way it saw women and men and i became so resentful about that article that it was ridiculous and i just went on and on and on and on talking about negative things about that specific article when the truth is you know you pick and leave you know you choose whatever is going to help you and just leave the rest but sometimes we just hold on to being upset about an organization or some causes you know when simply you just have to have your own opinion your own position about things and let others have their own um their own position as well their own opinion as well so that pretty much what it is and some possible reasons of resentment i wanted to kind of um, summarize them so we can clearly identify um, how we get to the point of becoming resentful and by having those possible reasons clear in our minds that might help us a lot sometimes it's because of the feeling that we've been mistreated or not appreciated by others maybe it's not accepting a loss this is very common when it's about a breakup relationship then we don't want to accept that we have lost that person and we want to hold on to it then we become very resentful maybe it, it has been to the fact that we've been investing too much effort trying to accomplish something and we feel that we have failed that we didn't get to do it regardless the efforts and how much energy we invested then we feel very resentful about the whole situation maybe we feel as a big team big team of something or someone or maybe others don't do what we expect them to do sometimes it has to do with feeling rejection or feeling abandoned or feeling that our rights have been ignored um, maybe it was an, a negative event that happened to us and that's what um, that's the reason why we became resentful it can be that we've been submissive about some negative behavior towards us and instead of defending ourselves and setting some limits we simply submissively have accepted that and we have kept our negative feelings and we have them inside or maybe it's having that feeling that someone is taking advantage of us or that something um, either is taking or has taken advantage of us maybe it's also not being validated or being recognized seeing others doing things that are accomplishing and our efforts are not being validated or recognized that's something that can be a reason for us to become resentful trying to please someone and getting rejection instead that's another huge one and again it has to do with our ego being hurt and how we just simply react to that um, when we try to hold on to a relationship that is no longer working the more that we hold on to it um, the more um, bigger the resentment that we get to feel because we kept investing ourselves emotionally and our time and our efforts to hold on to that relationship and make it work and again it takes two to make it work so um, we just get the rejection and we get negative results and then we become resentful it might be that we have suffered from discrimination or that something um, some sort of damage has been done to us and not amends have been made and that's a reason why we justify our resentment and feel resentful um, at times what triggers our resentments this is funny because if you ask me what triggers our resentment i can tell you anything and when i say anything i mean everything it can be someone's present or a someone's being there or that someone mentioned that person's name it can be a song it can be a movie it can be a tv show it can be a commercial it can be a statement someone made or a phrase that you heard it can be a place that you pass by a picture all my dear friends 
and I, again, I'm speaking on my own experience here. Everything triggers your resentments. When you are feeling resentful, doesn't matter what it is, but something is just like that fuel. And once again, we're back where we started and we bring that situation, that feeling, that event, that person all over again. And it, it doesn't matter if it was a year ago, it doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago, it doesn't matter if it was a week ago or if it was 20 years ago. Again, we feel that bitterness inside and we go on and on with that anger. And behind that anger, there's that huge pain that is not letting us move forward. So everything is possible to trigger those resentments. So that's why it's so important that we identify them and that we become totally and fully aware so we can start making the changes that we need to make in order to move over and move forward. Some effects that we suffer from uh, due to our resentments, I can tell you. You can even get physically sick because it's such a powerful feeling that it just overwhelms you, overwhelms you. And we feel that bitterness. We block ourselves emotionally. We stop, we get stuck. We stop growing emotionally. And the worst part is that we don't even recognize it. We don't even um, acknowledge it. And we simply stay there in that emotional stagnation. And we don't know what or why is it but somehow we feel that our life is stuck that we're not living with the quality of life that we wish and and this is important because sometimes you have a very good job you have a wonderful family things are going great and yet you feel stuck you feel that something's missing you feel that something is just not right and it might be that you are suffering from resentments so keep that in mind we feel sloppy mood sometimes we feel sad sometimes we even feel moody or even a little depressed we um, tend to be in denial whenever someone says oh you're still angry with that situation oh no no i'm not angry i'm just mentioning it but you can see our anger all over our body so it is stop us from opening up and, and trusting people Especially when it, it's time to move to a new relationship, it can be something, it can be a huge baggage that won't let you actually make that new relationship work. So if you ask me how to manage, how to control and stop resentments, I have a specific actions that I want to recommend to you. And that's as usual, the treat of the, of the evening, those specific recommendations on how to manage and control and stop your resentments. And notice that I use the three words, how to manage your resentments, because sometimes they just don't vanish all of a sudden, they don't disappear. It's gonna take a long time, but you need to learn to manage how that resentment is making you feel. You need to control it so it doesn't get so, doesn't get you overboard to the point that you start affecting not only your life, but the life of those surrounding you and the quality of life that you are trying to accomplish so far and how to stop resentment, how to start, um, cutting um, that resentment loose forever in order to get over it. So how to manage control and stop resentments. And the first action that I have for you, it's very simple as usual, is acceptance. Accepting and admitting that we are suffering from that resentment. Don't deny it anymore. Look at it. Accept it. That's, you know, being able to verbalize yes this is what i'm feeling and this is what i'm having this is what is affecting me it's going to resolve the conflict you're having inside so acceptance and ad admitting it is the first step as usual then make the decision make the decision i'm gonna get rid of this resentment it doesn't mean that it's gonna be right away it doesn't mean that it's gonna be today but it means that you really want to get rid of it so make that decision verbalize it hear yourself out saying, I'm going to get rid of this resentment. I cannot continue living with this resentment in, inside of me, affecting me the way it's affecting me. And then follow these precise actions. Identify and name those feelings. And this is the moment that I always tell you, get a journal, get a notebook, get a little pad and start writing identify and name the feeling and who is that feeling with if it's a person if it's a situation what happened 
why are you feeling what is it that you're feeling write it down so you can actually identify it better and i also try to identify what triggers your resentment maybe is that you're getting to see this person constantly maybe is that this person's moving on and someone's telling you about the new accomplishment this person is having maybe it's a memory maybe a situation maybe a thought but identify those triggers so you can start working on diminishing the impact the negative impact that they have in your life you need to define auto limits that's what i call boundaries with ourselves okay when I feel like this, I'm not going to talk to anybody about this situation. I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to write about it. I'm not going to nurture or dwell on these thoughts. You need to put that specific line that you draw, imaginary line that you draw on the ground of what you're going to allow yourself to do and what you are not going to allow yourself to do. And that's having your own set of boundaries for yourself. This is really important and it's huge. And move away from the situation. Move away from that thought. Try to distract yourself. Try to get engaged in activities that will demand your complete attention so you can actually stop with the, with the thought that is um, nurturing and fueling that resentment. Consider seeing things from another perspective. It's not always just the way you see it. And this is something that I have struggled myself. Um, and it has helped me understand that it's not only from my side of the street, but there's also another side and maybe things look a little bit different. That will help you open up your mind a little bit about the whole situation. Try to forgive, although I know, and I speak again on my own behalf, sometimes we don't want to forgive. But we need to be willing to want to want to forgive. I'm not saying to want to forgive. Listen again. To want to want to forgive. Because being willing to want to want to forgive eventually is what's really going to help us move forward and closer to forgiveness. Um, sometimes we associate forgiveness with losing. That it means that I lost. It has nothing to do with winning or losing. It has to do with finding your own peace and being willing to do whatever it takes to feel better about yourself and about the situation. So put all your energy, focus all your energy towards your self-esteem. Things that will nurture and help you love you more and make you feel better about yourself. Um, work on your self-image because the more the better that you feel about yourself that also helps a lot with diminishing the resentments use healing beliefs i always talk about healing beliefs affirmations visualizations visualize yourself um not feeling that resentment that you've been um, struggling with imagine yourself um, overcoming whatever situation or whatever person has um made you uh, feel the way that you feel or that you think it made you feel the way that you feel but visualize yourself free, free from that resentment because you need to be able to experience that freedom but you need to see it in your mind first before you move towards it and go back to those unfinished business or maybe projects or activities that maybe one day you started and you never finished them or maybe you dropped them or for any reason you wanted to do something and didn't get to do go back to that um, because again, it's about you and making you feel better. And my final recommendation is that if you continue with the obsession, if you keep feeling that huge resentment inside of you affecting you and you don't see any progress, maybe it's time to seek for professional help. Maybe that's the time when you need to talk to someone about it and deal with it in a more in intensive and personal way my final considerations to wrap up our session tonight freedom from resentments is that just remember that resentments stop you from fully living the life you deserve it has a negative impact on your present on your today and that's not what you longer want you end up hurting yourself more than hurting others and you hurt yourself more and more which is opportunity that you let resentment be and exist in your life it can turn into a huge inability to forgive and move on and um, i'm always promoted in emotional cafe it's about conquering yourself and accomplishing more and getting to live uh 
a fuller life, a better life, a more balanced life, and definitely resentment doesn't fit in. So you want to be able to move on and accomplish that level of life that you've been dreaming for yourself. It overwhelms you with toxic emotions and and definitely we have identified that that's not what longer we want to define us. It maintains that negative feeling on and on and on of something that no longer is happening and no longer exists. It already happened. Whatever you're feeling resentful about, it already happened. It's in the past. But unfortunately, resentment can stay for a long period of time and sometimes even forever if we don't do something about it. It can even get you sick, physically and emotionally sick, and it will avoid you from feeling fully at peace with yourself and others. And finally, I want to use the illustration of a great um, guy, Salvador Valades, that mentioned that um, becoming resentful is like drinking some poison while expecting others to die from such poison. And that's exactly what resentment uh, does to us. You know, make us feel um, that we're dying inside and it's only damaging us. It's only hurting us. It's only doing it to us. The other person, sometimes they don't even know the way we're feeling. So it's not even worthy. Again, my friends, this is Yomara Mayo Ingram, thanking you again for the opportunity to open your lives, your hearts for this session, Freedom from Resentments. I hope you could take some notes and I hope you put these actions together because this is what um, the month of May is about. It's about freedom and being able to break with those chains and trust me, resentment is a huge one that sometimes can stay for as long as we live. I wish you the best. Start working with your resentments and I'll see you next week for our next freedom presentation and remember to invite your friends. Thank you for joining me tonight. Bye.